Alright guys, so we got the left hand side of the elevator completely built up, glued together, and all that. All we gotta do from here is remove this from the actual building board, sand the top and the bottom surfaces nice and flush, and then from there we'll do the center line so that we can sand this and taper it to the actual uh, diagram on the plans. Alright, uh, other than that, on the right hand side here you can see we got the actual framing with the use of the uh, balsa stocks and everything now the thing about this particular model is that there's a lot of different angle cuts which makes the um, this particular portion of the build time consuming if you don't have like a, let's say a, a miter box uh, that already has those pre-cut angles you all you have to do is slide your stock in there in the miter box and basically saw away and you will always get it nice and straight well I don't have that miter box so basically what I'm doing is I'm taking my straight, straight edge ruler and I go basically on the plan Let me go ahead and remove this for you so you can go ahead and see exactly what I'm talking about here alright now as you can see that we got the cut lines here I don't know if you can really see that here in the camera let me go ahead and zoom in just a tad bit more just for your viewing pleasure. All right, so as you can see right here, we got all the actual uh, cut lines that we need to do with a particular uh, balsa stock like this. So what I did was, I went ahead and I put my straight edge ruler right in the uh, cut line, and I just took my pen and drew the line completely past those parts as you can see I did it here and also there and then from there what I did was I took my balsa pieces when I placed them over all I did was go from the top kind of sight it take my ruler and match up the ends to those lines as such and then made the mark and then from there I took my square, I put my square in this area like so, made the line to ensure we go ahead and cut this thing nice and straight. And then from here, we're just going to follow the line and saw away. All right, and that's pretty much how I got um, all my cuts, as you see here just doing that method all right now if you have a miter box life will be a lot easier because all you have to do is place your stock in there like I said and it already has those pre-positioned cuts where the actual saw fits into the groove and it just cuts away all right but anywho we're gonna go ahead and continue on with uh, this uh, for this part right here all I have to do is actually start cutting and gluing installing the uh, ribs all right and this is how I do this uh, nothing special nothing fancy it's pretty much just your old school way of doing things and uh, yeah been doing it like this for a long time now uh, if you guys got an easier uh, method by all means utilize it Alright, but I've been doing this in this particular fashion for a long time that uh, it just becomes almost second nature to me. Alright, and so I'm just gonna show you how I do this part like I said if you had a miter box life would be a lot easier that's for sure alright and then from here I can adjust this by taking my sanding block 
just basically going to the edge and sanding some off just like so I can leave it just like that I can continue going a little bit more I think I'm good right there and from that I will just take my thin CA and just put a drop right there and a drop right there that's more than a drop all right that's one then we'll just go over here and do the same thing over all right but this is pretty much how I do this thing you know you mean you can get your pen out and start using uh, your pen to mark everything if that's what will make it easier for you Just like that. should go right smack in there like so all right guys that completes the ribs for the right hand side of the elevator assembly you seen all that CA that wicked in all there all right now this is gonna be another proof that the cling wrap does not stick to the adhesive or to the CA or to the wood parts not like wax paper all right if this was wax paper I'd be peeling off wax paper off of this elevator all right so here we go see stuck you just pull it off clean as a whistle guys all right I don't know how it's a whistle clean but now all this that you see right here that's just the CA there is still this cling wrap can still be utilized which we will be using it when we built the uh, the main stab so that is proof right there that cling wrap does not stick all over your work all this shininess that's just the thin CA that dissipated you know throughout that which will be easy to sand off all the plastic all the cling wrap is still attached right here all right guys so we're going to go ahead and just allow this to dry completely and then we're going to sand top and bottom nice and straight and flush 
and we will start getting the actual uh, sheeting prepared so that we can sheet uh, these two parts after we do the tapering all right we got the elevator has basically sanded to the taper as per the plans all right now I did all the sanding off camera only because it's just your typical block sanding you know I mean how much more can you really emphasize in that but if you really needed to know um, I just use my regular t-bar sander I put it at the edge of the um, table and basically I got the rough shape by doing it this way and then when I got close to my lines I started going diagonally like this and like this to ensure that we got it all nice and straight all right so that's pretty much how I got that I mean it and your main thing is basically getting your line drawn out and ensuring that you're about you know 1 16th thick at the training edge of the elevator halves all right um, other than that that's pretty much it really in a nutshell so I got these two basically sanded, tapered. Now we're gonna get two of our 30 inch, our three inch, 116 by three inch by 30 inch length uh, balsa sheeting. We're gonna cut this so that we can get this elevator halves sheeted. All right. So we're gonna just glue it on like so. Get it all nice and sheeted. Right hand side on our left hand side right here. We got the bad piece that I'm trying not to utilize as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here and see where exactly that will intersect. And so far, if I were to glue this right about here, I think we can still utilize this piece of sheeting. And just eliminate that piece. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start applying our medium CA to this. Now you can use medium CA. You can use tie bond, whatever adhesive you feel comfortable utilizing. Go ahead and utilize it. All right. And I'm still waiting for uh, the order of some more CA to arrive. Just make sure that you got everything pretty much covered with glue because we want to ensure that we got good contact with the sheeting. All right, let's go plop this down there, right there at the corner, right here at the corner for this. I think we're good about here. Then I'm gonna push this down with my sanding block, of course. And by doing so, we ensure that we keep this thing straight. All right, with my rag. All right. straight take our rag and uh, we'll wipe off any excess CA like on the corners here all right we don't need all that CA there 
that's pretty much it. Now we got our other sheet here, which this one is has the bad piece right here as well. You can see it. That's the bad piece. Everything else looks okay. Oh, even right here. Starts to get bad right about here. So hopefully we can um, utilize this as well. And see you put this on this side. Oh yeah, we're we're good. So if I were to use it on this side, we'd be st we'd still be good. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and take care of that as well. We got these two elevator halves pretty much glued. All right, so we're just gonna leave it there, let that completely cure, and then once that's done, we'll go ahead and trim off the remaining areas, and then we'll take the other sheeting and we'll sheet the top. And so, <clears throat> I already went ahead and I did one side. Now we're going to do this side here. And so, all we're just going to do is apply medium CA around the perimeter to ensure we got good contact between the sheeting and the elevator parts. All right, so you don't have to go completely hay bonkers with this. CA or glue, but just make sure you have enough where you know you're going to have good contact, that everything is going to be really stuck to that sheeting. All right, let's go put a little bit more right about here. Doesn't hurt. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and line everything up here. Right about the corner is where I'm going at here. To the end of this piece. And then from here, press down real quick. That way we don't develop any warps. And it's the reason why I use my T-bar sander to push everything down because we got a bigger area to apply pressure. So even though I'm pushing down over here, the pressure is also pushing on this side as well. It's better than trying to use your finger and trying to do this one at a time. All right. All right, so that's that. Let's go ahead and go around the perimeter here and wipe off any of the excess CA that kind of oozed out. All right. That works for me. All right, I went ahead and I also, I put an R in the inboard portion all right and that basically is going to let me know that this is the right hand side i also did the same thing with this when i put out l for the left hand side so at least i know i got my left and the right it doesn't really matter if you flip flops and stuff like that but i just want to it's just something i have a habit of doing all right is basically sanding the V taper. So I would hinge it first before I do the tapering. And that's just the way I like to do it. I don't like to taper it at a point and then come back in and try to uh, cut a slit in that, you know. I'd rather cut it now and then go ahead and taper it later. 
All right, guys. So for this um, horizontal stabilizer, the first thing we're going to be doing is actually putting down the actual training edge of the assembly. So we got the uh, stock here. And what I'm doing is I'm just lining it up, making sure we are within the, um, the plans. and ensuring that everything is straight. You know, I got so many T-pins here that actually has CA on it because I end up using some of these T-pins to clean out the uh, CA applicator tips. So, it is what it is. Alright. So, I'm also using my um, balls at stab tips as also guys to ensure that I'm good on both sides as you can see right here if I were to put this on it actually matches up with everything so we're good there all right next is the actual stab center so got to make sure everything is nice and true sometimes these blocks are not completely true or even the size as you can see, this one's a tight tad bit smaller than what's on the plan, but we'll just center it as much as we can. Uh, be good. Double check everything. As you can see, the front. We got a good, nice joint here, butt joint there. Then we got our ply stab spar. We will put up front, like such. So as you can see, we're actually a little bit forward, far forward. So that means we have to adjust this block here slightly by shortening it. All right, so a little bit of sanding, that's all it is, as a matter of fact, Right here, we're okay. Over here, we're a little off because it's crooked. All right. So, we'll go ahead and uh, remove that. I'm just going to sight this down. Actually, matter of fact, let's go flip this around let's see if it's any better uh, I'm getting a better butt joint here yeah. now this side's shorter so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, leave it like that but I will line this up here and line this up right here like so and we'll see how much we actually need to get rid of So pretty much everything you see there in black. All right, so what I do here is just basically get my sanding block, my T-bar sander, and sand that off. All right, let's go fit that back on there. Double check everything. 
That side looks better. This side looks better. Come out just a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna sand it just a little bit more. And take off just a little bit more. Right. go that's a lot better all right cool I'm gonna go ahead and just sand this as well just a little all right there we go just like that here mark right here this is just so I know where exactly exactly the center is at here when I put it back on here I thought that was the half mark. Would have made a big boo-boo there. Yeah, that's what happens when you, your eyesight's getting bad. Just a tad bit shy of five inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark the center line. Just like such. Same thing with this. all the XSCA and then I'm gonna put a t-pin right here think I am. All right. Let's go this way. I like putting my ruler this way for some reason. Get it closer.
Okay, just make sure you push everything down. Wipe off that excess CA. All right. Now that I cannot put a teep in through because that's complete plywood right there. It's not raising up, so we're good. All right, and so from here, what we need to do is build the actual framework with the 1 8 by 3 8 by 30 inch long rib framing or ribs. All right, so that's what we're going to do from here. So we're going to fit everything, make it all nice and all try to get a good good joint on these things all right, so just like that and we can utilize your actual training edge here put it against it that way you can ensure everything is all good so right about here to here I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a t-pin right here in the back side of this to keep this part from moving on me. Just like that. Alright. So. Just like that right here. cut it just a little longer you can go ahead and sand it off later okay I'm gonna put some thin CA right here if I could get the thin CA out. All right, guys. So we got the horizontal stab inner framework all cut glued and all so all we got to do from here is pretty much remove this from the building board go ahead and sand the top and the bottom to make everything all nice and flush and then from there we're going to prepare the sheeting and get this portion sheeted all right um the stab tips and the stab leading edges do not get glued on until after uh, this whole centerpiece has been sheeted. So, um, you yeah, know, it's going to be just like how we did the vertical stabilizer. So, and uh, the rudder. So, yeah, other than that, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. And just go ahead and show you that even...
I don't even know what's going on that one. I'm just gonna pull this off real quick. And I kind of cut the, um, the cling wrap right here when I was trying to trim this. And so when I did put the uh, thin CA, it went underneath. So we'll see how it holds there. All right. But see, even with that, I got a little bit of the CA in that portion of the plan because that I was I ended up trimming that area and I cut the uh, the plan but other than that I mean the uh, cling wrap but there you go nice and sturdy basically sheeting all right so I went ahead and prepared one of the sheetings a three inch by 116 by three inch by 30 put both of them butted up together and yep that's what we got going on here all right so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and glue this to the I'm gonna say we're gonna glue that to the top, all right? The bottom, we're gonna go ahead and glue the uh, the next sheeting, but we're gonna use 30 minute epoxy. And we're gonna thin layer everything, and then we're gonna actually glue the sheeting with 30 minute epoxy. Uh, that way we have a really strong sheeting and joint and everything um well, we're not gonna have this horizontal stabilizer fly off all right or break apart or however you want to call it and not just that it's what it says here <laughs> all right so yep blah 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 blah, blah. all right it says right here no it is essential to get a strong and complete bond between the stab sheeting and the stab framework especially in the center all right therefore we recommend using 30 minute epoxy when you apply the final piece of sheeting spread the epoxy evenly and sparingly to avoid excess weight all right so that's what we're gonna do <clears throat> so we know that the top or the bottom section here is the one that's actually going to be on the fuse and glued onto the fuse all right therefore the top sheeting here is going to be glued like such and we're going to use the bottom sheeting is where we're going to actually apply the 30 minute epoxy all right so we're going to go ahead and uh knock this out kind of shake it a little bit here like that to kind of smear that CA and then we're going to apply even pressure
my gosh. That's that. Go ahead and take this next one and put it like this. Should be okay. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and let that cure. This is gonna be the uh, last portion of the sheeting for the horizontal stabilizer. All right, and with that said, this is gonna be the port that we're gonna be utilizing 30 minute epoxy to adhere it to the actual stab so that we have a nice strong joint. All right between the stab and the sheeting all right so first thing we're going to do we got a new blade we're going to true up the edges here let me see let's go do this side and i'm just going to Cut a small sliver off just to ensure that this thing is straight, straight as it can be. Keeping the blade up and down, nice and straight. take care of the other side here and do the same thing I'm just gonna run one into the other Just like so. Alright, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, edge glue this together. But for doing the edge gluing, I like to uh, do that on my glass surface. that is covered with um, cling wrap. All right. I notice that the thickness between these two are different. I wonder if I kind of do it this way. thicker there and then this side is thicker I'm gonna go 
go ahead and try to get it nice and close to each other. Thickness on the sheathing is different. different thicknesses on the sheeting in. The full span of the sheeting has different thicknesses. Craziness. Yes, it is what it is. I will just send it smooth, dang it. There you go. There you go. Now, this one feels way better. We're going to do it this way. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, kind of outline where the edge is at because it's hard to see. I'm only doing this because the joint is really fine. I can't even see the seam. Alright, there we go. So make sure we push everything down as good as we can. that area
Oops. Too much CA there. Good. All right. Making sure that everything is all intact, nothing splitting. We're good to go. Golden. All right. So this is going to go this way. Now we're going to put 30 minute epoxy, a thin layer throughout this bottom section of the stab. And then we're going to actually glue this to, and clamp this down with a lot of weight. Alright. We're going to clamp it down like such. All the weight that we can. Just like that. Alright, so. Horizontal stab epoxied onto the sheeting, or the sheeting epoxy to the stab, however you want to call it. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and mix up some 30 minute epoxy. We're not going to thin it down or anything like that. Full strength. And this is recommended in the instructions so I'm gonna basically follow that I mean normally I would just use medium CA and call it done it's what I've always done this is gonna be the first time that I ever use epoxy to adhere sheeting to anything as far as sheeting is concerned a brush on piece I'm gonna Brush on lightly, define lightly. So especially they're start, they're talking about the center piece here. You want to ensure that the center has good contact. And that's what it's really saying. And I, I can see that, you know. You don't want um, you don't want this to separate from the sheeting because you gotta think about it, right? The sheeting here is the one that's holding this whole stab onto the aircraft. You know, uh, as far as uh, as really anything. So 
they want to ensure that uh, you got really good contact, really good glue uh, contact and joint and everything like that right here at the center. And so we're going to go ahead and do that, you know. And so I think you can use like regular, you know, CA throughout the rest, as long as the center piece has the epoxy. But since we already got the epoxy going on here, I'm just gonna go ahead and go with it all the way through. got the horizontal stab completely sheeted and I also went ahead and I glued the leading edges and the wingtip um, the stab tip blocks on All right like I said uh, this is not rocket science um, pretty self-explanatory as far as applying these blocks all right it's just basically following the the plans just outlining it and cutting it all right and just gluing it on all right it's the reason why i'm not gonna really harp on it all right so um that's pretty much it what we got to do from here is just basically finish it up by sanding uh, everything nice and flat make everything all blended in all right curve and uh, sand the uh, stab tips you know to conform to the plans and then also round off the leading edge and also the sides and then basically hinging and beveling the elevators all right so in a nutshell that is the um, horizontal stabilizer all right so as you can see, we got it like this. This is the bottom. So we're just gonna do some sanding. So for something this thick, and this, this strong, I don't see how people are breaking their tail surfaces. I, I don't know, I, I don't get it. So we will see, you know, we will see. And so what I'm going to do from here, I already did this uh, right hand side. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prepare the slots for these hinges. These are the hinges that I'm going to be utilizing. All right. And I'm just going to use your typical number two uh, exacto blade or, you know, blade. And I'm going to just carefully with the outline, the center line here. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and lightly cut the slots. All right. Now, if you got a hinge slotting tool and all that stuff, then that's awesome. Um, I don't recall, you know, doing, being in this hobby for 40 years. It's only once that I have tried using a hinge slotting machine. And let me tell you. Maybe the technique on using it, uh, I just find this just easier, you know, to do. 
uh, the hinge sliding machine from I think it was Great Plains uh, it kind of oscillates back and forth really fast you use the little jig and you kind of put it on there and every time I did it it jumped and it skipped and all that stuff and yeah it was just a mess like I said maybe if I just give it uh, given it a little bit more time I probably would have did pretty good with it but um, I just revert it right back to just slowly making uh, hinge slots with my exacto blade all right and so this is pretty much how I do it nothing fancy but still does the job and mainly what are you doing here is just keeping your blade nice and straight up and down and then just little by little make your way through all right we don't need to go all the way through for this particular hinge and, and then at the same time too all depends on the, your your stock that you're using if it's very soft hard you know whatnot it's gonna also determine uh, how quick you can make these slots all right so that's pretty much how far I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna rock it back and forth keeping the blade nice and straight up and down and that's it just like that so I'm just gonna remove this go ahead and test the one just slide it in there just like that all right now this is the reason why I prefer uh, doing the hinge slots before I actually bevel the leading edge of the control surface this is because since this is nice and flat I know for a fact that I'm gonna get this at the center every single time All right? if this was already at a bevel I'm gonna be trying to make my way at the center and keeping it straight without gouging out the uh, material all right and so as long as this is straight up and down and then my blade is straight up and down and I just little by little work my way in while pressing or putting slight pressure every single time my blade will always go in straight or my hinge will be cut nice and straight all right Now, but just be mindful when you're doing this because you can still slip and cut yourself. That's the last thing we need to do is cut our hands because our hands is the one that, you know, continues to build, right? Your hands are hurt. You can't continue your build. Or you could, but it's going to be very uncomfortable. You know, like pin hinges and stuff. Then eventually, I don't do this. All right, so we got that done. Now it's time to go ahead and prepare this part here, which is pretty much the same thing. And um, how I got the center line here, I don't know. I I know I showed it earlier. But I'm using um, just an old school tool that is all, uh, included with most of the uh, Car Goldberg kits and stuff like that, which is this right here. It's a centering uh, centering tool or center um, locating tool. You know, you just put it down, twist it until both sides are lock like that, and that will ready automatically. Uh, locate center push it down there's a little there's a little uh, nipple right there sharp point so once you push it down it embeds into the uh, wood grain and then you just drag it along and it automatically puts the indentation for your, uh, your the center which is pretty cool it 
it just makes finding the center really easy. And I, I used that um, to locate the center all the way around this whole stab. All right, so that's how I found center all this. I just basically put it on here and just went around. Real easy. Now before I actually push that in, I'm going to pull one of these out and I'm going to use it to push it through here just to make sure that's one. Oops. That's two. three all right so my hinges go all the way in now we're gonna go ahead and put this on and this is the other reason why I do not bevel just yet is because we still need to um, also sand the tips and I like it I like to be able to um, have this first of all attached to the stab so we know that this is all sent you know centered all the way down and then from here we can lock this with the center line of the elevator to the center line of that um, stab tip, like that. And then we get that all nice and secured. Then we can go ahead and start tapering the stab tips to the actual elevator. And it would be straight, you know. And so how I do that is I would normally just push everything towards the wing tip or the tip like that. And you can either uh, use tape on both sides and pull it tight and keep it centered. At the same time, I use like a, a T-pin. You can push a T-pin a through and, and run it and lock it in there. But in this case, I don't want to separate the... Uh, this. That way the tip kind of and, and the rudder adds a little friction right and then from here I'll take my tape I'll do one side like this I'll wrap it around the training edge like that that way it has grip all right and then I'll kind of go like this a little bit past. Tape that down. Then I'll do the same thing on this side. And then we will pull this also to ensure that it's at the center line right there. All right. Just like that. And then from there, you can either do two things. You can sand it just like that, being careful that you don't move your elevator throughout. Or you can 
use your pen, your marker, gonna trace where that needs to be cut or sanded. And then you can go ahead and start attacking that. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and add more tape just to help it stay even more steady. Now this, you could do a lot of different ways on doing this, but this is just how I'm doing it right now. So, you know, it is what it is, guys. and straight right about here there you go just like that and see now it's nice and tight I can go ahead and at least get this all nice and rough sanded really quick all right so that's what we're gonna do here so I'm just gonna grab uh, my little sanding bar, the small one. Ooh, almost dropped it onto that thing. And I'm just going to just keep it nice and straight, nice and flat. So we're not sanding anything else besides all right get it to the uh, rough shape and then we'll call it good to go all right and so far it looks okay a little bit more right here and we'll be okay on the top all right There's other ways you can do this as well. You can put a piece of stock under there. Here's another way to do that. If you find a piece of stock that's the right height, that will lock it like that lock everything down and it's centered then you're good to go well this particular stock is just a little too thin a little bit more maybe another 160th of an inch higher like that and it will probably be the exact height I need. All 
Alright, so we'll just pop that down like that. And there you go, that center right there. So now if you press down on this, and it's not gonna move on you. Alright. this around we'll go this way just make sure everything is still nice and flat and if I have to push this down it's still center so we're good there like that and you can come over here and finish this off Eventually, this these tips are gonna get rounded, like the plan here. So it's gonna it's gonna get rounded off at the tip, like such, to a certain degree, to include this front piece. It's gonna go like that. All right. That's pretty much how I did that. And, uh, yeah. If you look at it from the side, we're still within the center line. Everything is all nice and straight there. So, I think we're good on this side. Now it's time to do the other side. All right. I'm going to take care of that off camera. All right, guys. So we went ahead and we finished sanding the uh, taper ends of the stab tips, all right, the tip blocks. So now from here, we can finish off this horizontal stabilizer and elevator assembly by rounding off the leaning edge. Uh, I need to verify if this, uh, this is also rounded. I'm not too sure. And then... Um, we can start beveling our leading edges on the actual elevator control surface itself all right and just to, as a reminder that the top sheeting this is the top i went ahead and marked it the top sheeting was just applied with regular medium ca the bottom sheeting however was attached like um like you saw earlier with 30 minute epoxy all right, a thin layer of 30 minute epoxy and weight it down to ensure we got a good bond uh, between the um, the framework, the epoxy, and the sheeting. So nothing is floating on top type deal. Everything is really good mechanical bond for the glue. All right, and to ensure that your centerpiece here is really concentrated on having a good joint, good glue bond uh, to the actual framework. Because if you basically did piss poor glue joint here between the sheeting and the frame, that's where the separation can happen. Uh, and that's pretty much of any sheeted surface, all right? But anywho, that is the uh, elevator and rudder assembly. So like I said, I just got to finish um, sanding everything there. But we got that going on. That's pretty much it. Awesome stuff. All right.